me a divine idea from you that will cause my life to grow. Help me, God, to be able to cultivate something new in my life. Make me a blessing to my neighborhood, to my family, to my world. May I make a difference in somebody's life. Cultivate something in me. I dare you to ask God to be able to cultivate the ground that he has entrusted under your stewardship. Solomon's key message in Ecclesiastes was it is futile emptiness to attempt to be happy apart from God. More than anything else, Solomon kept saying, vanity, vanity, all is vanity. It is futile emptiness to attempt to be happy apart from God. You think that if you marry this man or marry this woman, I'm going to be happy. You think if I get this house or get a few properties, I'm going to be happy. You think if I drive this kind of car and get these kinds of clothes and have this kind of jewelry and have these kinds of real meek lashes, that I'm going to be happy. But it is futile emptiness to attempt to be happy apart from God. If I get these high society friends, I'm going to be happy. If I get this degree, if I get accepted into this uh, you know, group, into this society, into this sorority, this fraternity, then I will be happy. But any attempt to be happy apart from God is futile emptiness. Futile emptiness. Jesus is uh, telling us something about it when he talks about the wind. Remember here that the wind helps to propel, to perpetuate, and to accelerate what is in the earth. That's what wind does. Wind carries seed, and it helps to propel and to accelerate and to perpetuate whatever's in the earth. Now, I want you to notice what the wisest man that ever lived, Solomon, said about the, the wind in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 6. He says the wind goes toward the south and turns around to the north and wind whirls about continually and comes again on its own circuit. And notice that he's, he's just talking about the wind, just talking about the wind. Jesus compared the Holy Spirit to the wind in John chapter 3 and verse 8. Notice, the wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit, born of the Holy Spirit. And remember when the Holy Ghost fell in Acts chapter 2 and verse 2? Notice, and suddenly, 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 I'm just telling you that we're in a season of miracles now. We're in a revival of miracles that God is going to suddenly do things. There's going to be a quick acceleration of the blessings of God coming into your life. Suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And notice that wind filled the whole house where they were sitting. Can you imagine? If the wind of God begins to fill the house once again, you're going to come alive to the purposes of God and burn with a passion and a fire of the Holy Ghost. They, they uh, then noticed that there were cloven tongues like as a fire that sat upon each of the wind and fire. Wind and fire, they actually go hand in hand like a hand in a glove. They go hand in hand. And so we're supposed to cultivate something in the earth and we're supposed to harness the wind. We harness the wind. Harness the wind. Don't just go through things. Harness the winds of your emotions and your pain and turn them into something productive, profitable, and powerful. Harness. Harness the wind. There are things called wind turbines. You, you might have seen them. They, it looks like fan blades. And they catch the wind and they turn that motion into electricity. It's something that is productive, something that is profitable, something that is powerful. Instead of just feeling the wind, Convert the wind, harness it, harness it, and turn it into power. Turn it into profit. Turn your pain into something that makes a difference in the world. Turn it into, don't just hurt for hurting, hurting sake. Feel the pain and ask God, Lord, show me out of the pain of what I've gone through to be able to make a difference in the lives of some others. It was when one woman's son was killed by a drunk driver that then it became mothers against drunk drivers. It wasn't going to bring her child back, but it was going to save somebody else's child from being killed by a drunk driver. Take what has pained you and let it birth something. Remember, every wound, W-O-U-N-D, becomes a wound, W-O-M-B. It's a birthing place. Yet you feel something. Yes, you hurt. But let something be birthed out of that. Women go through childbirth and labor. It's pain. Even if you get an epidural, it's just masking the pain. It's really not stopping the pain. Your body is still feeling the contractions on the inside, and it's making it do what it do to open up, to dil dilate, and, and to completely efface so that birth can come out. It's not designed to 
be comfortable. Whenever you're birthing something in another season of your life, God is going to send something, and oftentimes it takes a storm. The storm that comes into your life is a signal that your season is changing. Whenever winter shifts from winter into spring, we go through a storm. And when we shift from spring to summer, we go through a storm. And from summer to fall, you go through a storm. Storms signal the, the change of a season. When your relationship ends in a certain dimension, you go through a storm. It signals the change of a season. When it's time for you to switch jobs, you oftentimes will go through a storm on that job. It's the signal. Are you listening? It's a signal of a change of season. And when you walk with God, and I'm just telling you, and keep the right attitude, God will bless you in your new season better than whatever you had it in your last. I'm just telling you, if you keep your attitude right, if you keep your heart right, and if you'll be grateful to God and stay down to earth, God will make your next season better than your last. You might go through a storm to try to get through it, and it might rain, it might hail, you might have tornadoes that will come, storms may rise and winds may blow, 